Hello, my name is Ben and this is Mike. Today we recreate our very first recipe from 2010 and then try and make a version even better to see what we've learned in that time. Here it goes. <laughs> so today we're going to be doing beef and <laughs> ale. <laughs> <laughs> If you followed Sorted for any length of time, you might know that we do recipe labs, and it's basically where we test every single recipe that leaves this building, whether it's going to books or videos or anywhere else. And today, we thought it might be fun to go back to our very first recipe that we ever published, which was a beef and ale stew. There was nothing wrong with it at the time, it just got bad with age, <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> Recreate it as it was in that recipe, but then also see if we could experiment and improve upon it because hopefully we've learned some things in the last eight years. Look at that, look at that plating. Affordable one pot cooking, two pound nine, two pound ninety a portion. Just saying, two pound ninety a portion. So Jay and I are attacking the classic recipe, the very first one we did, a mirepoix, carrot, celery, onion, garlic, all chopped up. They're going to pan with starts off a bit of oil. Me and Barry are doing our new stew and we've all put our heads together and thought of some things that we've learned over the years to almost improve the recipe that we've done before. I have sweated the onions and garlic and celery for quite a long time. It's probably cut a little bit smaller than the other guys and then cooked out some tomato puree. Step three of our recipe, uh, we need to add our tomato puree and flour. So we've got to allow the veg to brown and we've got to scrape up the brown bits from the bottom of the pan as we go. You know why? Because flavour. Uh, in Ebba's excitement, he's put the garlic in already, whereas the recipe actually states to put the garlic in later in the cooking process. Um, so to make sure this is a fair comparison, I'm just removing the garlic. All right, I've got as much of the garlic out as I possibly can. Can you wait for me next time and I'll tell you. Now that your veg has had a head start, the garlic can go in. No! What are you doing? We are literally four steps away from putting the garlic in. What's that? That's rosemary. The recipe's just a guideline. Have a bit of fun. See what comes at the other end. Now the garlic goes in. Step three of our recipe. Uh, we need to add our tomato puree and flour. Try it, put your knees in the mug. Hot water. Let them steep. This is something we've discovered. Delicious beer. Use the most delicious beer you can find. Am I right? You Am I right? right? You are right. It's going in. <sighs> beef shin all the time. We're using the same cut of beef because beef shin is the perfect thing to slow cook, but we're also adding some bone marrow for an extra beefy element. We also fried the beef off before we put it in the stew, whereas those guys kind of put it in the stew after they'd added all the liquid. Uh, that's just going to add an extra level of flavour because you're getting that caramelisation on the beef. Porcini mushrooms in something that is slow cooked just adds a, another level of flavour. Dumplings, the single best thing about any stew, apart from the beef, is the dumplings. Equal ratio of self-raising flour, suet, generous pinch of salt and pepper, a couple of tablespoons of horseradish and just enough cold water to bind it to the dough. And that's because we're copying the recipe as per eight years ago. Stew's been in there for a couple of hours, which obviously gives you time to play with the spreadsheet. So I've costed this particular dish with today's prices, and the way we've done it, it works out £3.58 a portion. Give them a bit of space to expand. A couple of options, lid on to steam it. I want to put a lid off so you get a little bit of a crusty top of your dumpling. We're going to make spinach gnocchi. Gnocchi is technically a dumpling. So what you're actually saying is we could make a beef stew with dim sum and that would still be dumplings. Te technically, technically yeah. Why not? Do you want to do that? Or like a calzone. <gasps> Let's put a calzone in there because that's like a pizza dumpling. And this is why they're not normally involved in the recipe labs. Although it's very creative of you Barry. Gnocchi is Really simple, almost as simple as making simple dumplings. It's boil some potatoes, get them as dry as possible, then you want to mash them out when they're nice and cool, and you want to scatter some flour over and mould it into your gnocchi. But what we're doing is we're adding a little bit of horseradish and some spinach 
blitz into it so it goes a vibrant green as well. We're blanching the spinach, which is just cooking it in boiling water for a very short time, and then we're refreshing it in cold water. Uh, that keeps a very vibrant color, and cooking it makes it blitz much better. So it will kind of be a lot greener when we actually put it in the gnocchi. Once we've got the right sort of volumes, we'll then mix that with our spinach and our horseradish. We should have some lovely lime green gnocchi. It's that balance between cooking them through so they're not doughy in the middle. Yeah. But we don't want them too small doing. We're going to cook them in the broth. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. This is going back in the oven. We'll give it 15 15 minutes, minutes, 10 to 15, 15 minutes. Ish. Usually like fresh gnocchi would cook in like two minutes or something, but it's not in boiling water. And we're not, look we're not looking for necessarily that gnocchi texture, right? Oh, it's a much nicer bowl than what we had eight years ago. When have you ever known a beef stew take two people ten minutes to plate up? I mean, literally, isn't the whole point? Guys, throw it a pan, cook it, let it do its battle. thing. This is a friendly thing. We're all in this together. It's ready. Ours has won. Come on, you got to do it. On you time got, and effort got to do and it. price. Yep, yeah, got to do it. Because that is beef and ale stew sorted. Turn back time and go back to 90. What was it? 2010. So I made sure that Ben completely stuck to the original recipe. Um, he did put some herbs on right at the last minute, but I feel like any dumpling that's made with suet is naughty. Horseradish dumplings are amazing. That beef is falling apart, tender. That is. Mm. You can't knock that. That is a dish I've had what well, feels like hundreds of times. Yeah. And it's a flipping good version of it. Mm. And it's aiming things that matter. Money, time, and washing up. Mm. Yeah, that was all done in one pot. The thing is, for how easy that was, it is packed full of flavour. Considering the amount of effort that you went to, is it noticeably better? Yeah, well, and, and it's not a crazy amount of extra effort. What you've tried to get, and we'll see if it works, is, is sort of almost more of the umami. Mm. I'm a little bit upset I haven't got a spoon because that sauce is a little bit thinner but it feels richer and more stick to your ribs and more incredible even though it's slightly thinner in viscosity. That is a world away from our stew. There is nothing wrong with our stew whatsoever but that just has so much more to it. The beef is a completely different texture. How have you done that? It's the same beef. I know. Maybe moving on eight years or so from a student. Maybe as a student we wouldn't have had porcini mushrooms in our cupboard. Maybe we wouldn't have had bone marrow kicking around. Not that it's expensive, but it was we just weren't thinking those things. But to add them in there doesn't add any complexity to the process, but it adds a huge amount of depth to the flavour. It's at this point in our cooking journey where it gets the most fun. And I would recommend to anybody out there, go back to one of our recipes, one of your own recipes, recook it, but Find a couple of twists to see to kind of put you on the edge and like test it, see how far you can take it and have your own recipe lab. That's where cooking gets proper fun. If you like that, then like the video. And also, why don't you comment down below with a recipe from an old school sorted video um, that we can recreate next? One thing I didn't like about that video was how we looked eight years ago. Yeah, fresh faced, ready to take on the world, and now we're just. If you follow us on social media, you would have seen so many people submitting their versions of our new recipes from our new cookbook, Can't Be Asked to Cook. And Ebbers, there are only a few copies left of the book. I know. And do you know what's most amazing about it? What? All the photos you guys are sending in of you cooking the recipes, most of them are of the recipes that these guys contributed in the first place. Yeah, exactly. You're bypassing awesome. all of our <laughs> recipes. But go across to our website, go and get one of the last few books if you haven't. They are brilliant. Members get a discount. Everything is down below. Get all the information and be happy. Our resident dad is on holiday <laughs> at the moment, and in his uh, absence, uh, he's asked me to read out a joke. Okay. This is my chance to be a daddy. Has he actually Are you ready? He sent me one. He has sent me one. Oh, good. This morning, I woke up with rice stuck to my face. 
No, I must have fallen asleep as soon as my head hit the pilau. Boom! <laughs> That's better than any of his. <laughs> as we mentioned, Sorted is just run by a group of friends. So if you like what we're doing, then there are loads of ways you can support us and get more involved. Everything you need to know is linked below. Thanks and hope to see you in a few days. Turn you on. Are you going to